Hello, 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 everyone, and thank you for joining me this wonderful Tuesday. I'm your host, Louise H. Reed, with listeners in over 145 countries and millions of iTunes downloads and ongoing podcasts each month. I'm here every Tuesday to look into the lives of everyday people doing extraordinary things. People who take brave, bold action in pursuit of their dreams and goals and are here to share their journey to help you do the same in yours. Before we start, I'd like to thank you for joining me each and every week for providing me the opportunity to share and grow with you. There is nothing more valuable than time and so I'm honored that you're sharing yours with me. And to show my gratitude, I have just started a monthly giveaway. Anyone who likes or comments on a podcast episode, likes or comments on the live Facebook feed will be entered into a monthly draw for a prize. So please comment and like away. Now I'd like to move on to today's amazing guest. Today we have with us Heather Matson. And she is, among other things, um, she is a vet tech, an animal lover and rescuer and cancer survivor and warrior. I should add to that and, and uh, Wonder Woman. Those who, those who know me well know we have a huge Wonder Woman fan and I don't know if I've ever given anyone else that title. So <laughs> uh, Heather is with us today to share her story and her journey. And I'd like to welcome you to the show, Heather. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to have you so, so much. I've been looking forward to this chat for some time now. And I think I mentioned this to you when I first reach out, reached out to you to be on the show. Um, that, and I'd like to share this with my listeners. That I first came across you because I read about you in the news. <laughs> and I saw this woman... Uh, who was, it was you, <laughs> who <laughs> is facing uh, a, a battle that others read about and hope that that would never be them. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was a woman who looked and sounded, and you are, courageous. And, and beyond that, just so open and vulnerable, wanting to share her story and bring this situation to the light to shine the light on this situation for the purpose of others learning um and actually feeling good about themselves and that was to do with your ostomy bags so i'm really yeah. excited to get into that a little later but i wanted to share that was just my vision of you mm -hmm. and the feeling that i walked away with was like i need to know this kick-ass woman <laughs> and so thank you for being here Oh, thank you. It's an honor. So um, before we sort of jump into the story, because I know your story is one of lots of ups and downs, as is everyone's life. Yours is um, quite a unique one. Um, why, why do you believe it's so important to share your story? Um, my biggest reason to sharing is I've seen my family members hide behind their cancer, hide behind their ostomy, and it put them in a downward spiral where they didn't want to leave the house. They, they had so much depression and so many medications because of the depression. I wanted my story out there to show everybody, it doesn't matter how young you are, being diagnosed with something so awful that you can rise above it and don't let it stop you from being who you want to be and so i promised myself from the day i was diagnosed i'm gonna be i'm gonna be that person i'm gonna be that strong person who's gonna show other people who might be younger than me like your teens um or your older people like don't give up just come on, let's band together. It's a support group. Let's be there together and don't go down that, that negative path because it's not healthy. And, and what a voice and, and, and you are doing that and you are absolutely <laughs> doing that. Um, you mentioned a word that in, in that description that I wanted to ask you, I know what it is, but for the mm -hmm. purpose of my listeners, you mentioned an ostomy. What's an yeah. ostomy? What is an ostomy? So an ostomy is 
Um, you can have an ostomy for many different reasons. Um, an ostomy is where either your bladder is being removed, your uh, part of your small or part of your large intestine or your whole intestine is being removed, and they have to remake uh, through your small intestine. They have to make this new stoma, this new outward pore. And it actually comes out of your abdominal wall and you have an, a bag, an appliance bag that's attached on the outside of your body and stuck permanently to your abdomen. So unfortunately, you know, it's a lot of us are always going to live with it for the rest of our lives. So the ostomy is actually the, 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 for lack of a better word, I apologize, is the bag that... Yeah, um, the ostomy is the actual um, small intestine that is protruding out of your abdom abdomen wall. Okay. That's what's yes. called your, your stoma. And then from that, they say, well, you're an ostomate patient. And so an ostomate could be a urostomy, which is the removal of your bladder. Okay. So of a bladder bag that you know you pee on the outside of your uh, body or you have a colostomy which i it would be kind of cool to have a colostomy because you still have normal bowel movements you go two three times a day and they're normal they're formed but you poop on the into this bag right bag off and you throw it away or you have what I have. It's called an ileostomy where I don't have any large intestine. So they, they take my small intestine and they bring it to the outside of my abdomen, fold it inside out, and then stick the, yeah, inside out. And then they stick this um, bag over it, this bag appliance. And I have watery stool. 24 seven. So I can't control it. She, and I call her a she, she, um, poops all day, every day. So, <laughs> heck I could be doing it right now. <laughs> yep. I, 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 I love how you're just so open about this. And I think that does a lot for the, I imagine, right. I've not experienced this, anything like this myself, but I imagine that it does a lot to shine the light on the shame. You know, yes. Yes. like it, it, it's, uh, we're here talking about obviously your story, but I think that, that listeners, whether they've been through something like this or um, mental health thing, there's so many things that people are struggling with yes. that we feel shameful about. And when we mm -hmm. find light on the shame, it really does a lot to help ourselves and to help others. Yeah. Yeah, there and even the people that are caregivers to ostomy okay. patients, you know, they don't know what to say or what to do around them, and so it is hard. It's hard not just as an ostomy patient, but the people that are around us. They don't know what to say, what to do, you know, it offend us, and that's it. It doesn't offend us. Talk about it. it we're you know, we're pretty open about it. So I actually want to go down that a little bit. So about, I think it's about a year ago, I wrote an article and I posted on LinkedIn and uh, it was about the 10 dumb ass, like dumb ass things people have said to me because I had suffered from depression. Mm -hmm. And so it was meant to obviously to educate, but also to poke a bit of fun at it so we can actually start the conversation. So what are some of the dumbest, <laughs> this is like dumb ass things that you'd really like to share and say, please don't say these things, just say this instead. Oh my God, this is great. Uh, <laughs> number one, this is the all time best one. So with a bag, you can't have sex, can you? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, legit. I'm like, I can have sex just like anybody else. They and took your intestines, not your, not your vagina. Exactly. I'm like, uh, and they go, so how do you poop now? And I'm like, I kneel over the toilet, I empty my bag, <laughs> I get up and I can go do anything I want. They're like, oh, so yeah, can I still have sex? How do I poop? <laughs> Does that thing have to be attached to you 24-7 as in my bag itself? The right. You know, right. 
Yes, it's <laughs> on me 24 seven. Uh, I take it off every three days to shower and clean around. But oh yeah, those are my typical three like dumbass questions. <laughs> okay. They're going, really? <laughs> and I want to be nice because I, I bet you that they don't really know, you yeah. know, too much about it. So yeah. I answer it. I don't say anything mean. But the sex one, I do. <laughs> I'm actively trying to date. So <laughs> it's like a huge, oh, it's huge. I, oh, that's a story in itself on the act of dating. Mm, not so good. <laughs> And I think that, I think that's a great, I love how you're even sharing that. And we could probably have a whole show on that too. Um, but I, I think that I imagine that people who are experiencing something like what you're going through, someone who's, I can't talk about mental health, but some other big things going on in their life. I'm sure it can be a scary place to go. Like delve into the world of dating when, what do you say oh. to someone? How does it, like, how does that how does that change the scene, if at all? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, for me, before my surgery, you know, I was single. I was actively dating. But I didn't have to, you know, I wasn't abnormal at that point. So I could go out on dates. I can, you know, feel fine. And so what, you know, if they didn't like my nose or the way my hair color or how short, then that was obvious. Okay, goodbye. Peace yeah. out. It's something yeah. that you yeah. see right on that first date. Of course, my bag, I don't discuss my bag on the first date. Yeah. I rule to myself. It's on the third date. I'll be like, okay, these dates are going great. I want to wear something a little form fitting. Well, I'm eating dinner. My bag starts to fill, you know, with, you know, crap. Yeah. And even though it's all liquid, I'm like, okay, I better go excuse myself to the restroom. And then typically by the end of the night, if things are still going good, I'm like, so, hey, you know, I think you're great. I want to go out on another date. And they're like, yeah, let's go back to my place. Well, you know what happens when you get invited yeah. back to a place, you know, okay. it's kind of maybe lean to, you know, going to the next stage. And I'm like, well, let's have this discussion right here. Yeah. So I'm not normal. Underneath my clothes, I have what's called an ileostomy bag. I have a I have a poop bag on the outside of my body and I have it covered up with a beautiful, you know, one of my covers, but this is permanently on me. And they just look at me like, what? And about, so let's use the six guys that I've went out on dates with in the last two years. Four of them have like, boom, peaced out. They paid their bill and left. Yeah. The other uh, one said, oh, yeah, absolutely, I'd be cool with it. Then he saw it, and then he's like, can you leave now? And the sixth one, he's so far, so far, he's pretty comfortable with it. So, and he's seen it. He asked questions, you know, so I guess we'll see where it goes. But yeah. definitely it's, it's hard to bring up. It's, you know, like, where do you, where do you even begin to say yeah, and uh, I, 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 I love that you're bringing this up because this is real, this is real life. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. This is real life and you're not hiding and it, you know, because I just feel like that, that, again, it adds to that shame. And anytime that I have seen anything about you, the, again, that courage and strength, which doesn't mean I imagine there are dark days and I imagine there are tears and I'm, there's stuff that's just not, it's not a good good great story to be your story but yeah. the way that you own it and share it i i just think you're an incredible woman i really do um so why don't we talk a little bit about your story um so i know that you um have been working were working are working as a vet tech uh, i still am a part-time i do what i can <laughs> yeah. you're a star <laughs> um although i do like what you said i do what i can because I just certainly don't want to be, you know, suggesting that we have to like push ourselves beyond what we think is, you know, is good for our bodies. Um, so, okay. So take us back a little bit in time. Cause I know you were diagnosed in 2017. Yep. 2017, uh, May of 2017, I was diagnosed with can uh, stage three colon cancer. Then a month after that, I, uh, 
went in for my first major surgery, which is, was the removal of all my large intestine, my rectum, and then my, my new pooper was made as what yeah. we call it, you know, yeah. and I was attached to that. And so that was approximately a six to seven hour surgery. A few little complications, you know, just with low heart rate and blood pressure. Um, but a little over a week in the hospital, I got to come home and start three months recovery at home. So, wow. and, and how old were you then when you were diagnosed? Um, I had my surgery when I was 34 and two weeks after my surgery, I turned 35. Wow. So I still classify it as I was 34. Yeah. <laughs> and so that strikes me as young. <laughs> it is to, to have this kind of um certainly this kind of disease and yeah. also just the severity of it it is and that's a big thing right now too is there are so many younger people because you know when you're told when you're 50 you go in for your first colonoscopy you know insurance is going to pay for it because you're at that stage right so everybody goes into thinking that um, so like for me being so young and going, gosh, why am I sick all the time? Why is my abdomen so bloated? Why am I puking 24 seven? I'm not keeping any food in and you're fighting with the doctors and they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong. You're healthy. You're 34 years old. You know, you, it's just things that could be going on. You probably have IBS, irritable bowel disease or syndrome, whatever one you want to call it. I'm like, no, this is different. No, this, you know, so it was yeah. just like, and then I'm like, I am 34. This has got to be young. Eh, maybe the doctor's right. Maybe we'll look more into the Crohn's, you know, and things. Yeah. And then when it just kept getting worse, it's like, okay, I know I'm 34, but let's do this colonoscopy. There's something wrong. And now, now since I've been diagnosed, I'm reading so much more about the cancer, you know, colorectal cancer. And it is, it's amazing. 30, you know, 32, 35, 36 year olds out there, you know, fighting and dealing with it. It's like, wow, it is getting a lot younger. It is. And isn't this the month? Isn't this colo? Yeah. 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 Colorectal cancer month. Yes. Yeah. month. And so, and uh, earlier in the month, um, I had someone on, uh, on the show as well, who was mm -hmm. diagnosed at 32. And so, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a real, it's a real thing. What are you wanting people to walk away with knowing after sharing your story? What do you want people to walk away with either knowing or feeling? Yeah. Um, for people that of course don't have can colon cancer, you know, my biggest thing is be an advocate for yourself. If you're sick, you don't feel right. Who knows your body better than you? Nobody. The doctors are there to help and to treat us. Absolutely. I will not say anything bad about at least my health care. Um, but be your advocate and go in, get your checks and, you know, your checkups and your blood work and talk to your doctor. If you're not feeling right, even if it's just depression, even because we do all have that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I haven't had it with all this. But definitely, please listen to your body, do what's right, and go in and talk to your doctor and be the advocate that you need to be to get to, you know, what you, the care that you need, because you don't know, you just don't know what could be going on. And it, it's funny, isn't it, how we get feelings and senses about things, and then yes. when it can't be sort of validated in this physical world, we think that, oh, it must be wrong, or it must be overreacting, or... Or maybe, it's in your head. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I, and I, so I appreciate you sharing that because I think that's so important that that intuition, when that is screaming at you, follow, mm -hmm. follow, through, uh, yes. follow through with that. And so, um, yeah, I love that. I think that's a great message for, for everyone to walk away with, to be your own advocate. Um, so what have you learned so far through this whole journey you know because at 34 years old i'm sure you have a, a quite a you probably think you're rocking it in this world and then all of a sudden you get this massive thing thrown yeah. on your lap uh 
I, that's a great question. Everybody asks me that. And what I've learned is who I really am now. I, I've, I've stronger than I've ever known. I've, you know, I've always just kind of been not the wallflower, but the person in the back. I was always the follower. I was never the leader. And then I got the backbone to stand up to the doctors and say, there's something wrong. And I was like, Hey, I can do this. I was diagnosed. I had all my surgeries and I'm like, look at how strong I am. I am strong. I can, I'm a whole new person. The patients, I have patients like nobody's business now. Before I was that 34 year old in at say, you know, at your local grocery store going, come on woman, can you get out of my way? <laughs> and now I'm sitting there going, oh, it's okay, hon. You just take your time. You're probably having a worse day than I am. Yeah. Rage, you know, somebody cutting you off. Now I look at it going, wow, you must have to get somewhere. Okay. Peace. Good luck. You know, so my patience and just how strong I know I physically am. And I have a purpose before yeah. I'd always knew, Hey, I'm a, I'm a vet technician. I love my job. I love helping animals, but there was something missing. I just, I had a drive, but I didn't know what, where it was and how do I ignite that in my body? And then with this cancer, I ignited it and I'm taken off with it. And I feel like I'm, I wake up with a purpose every morning now and I go to bed feeling like I'm fulfilling it. <laughs> yeah, I find that extremely moving. Thank you. I really do. Um, tell us a little bit about these covers. Oh, yeah. I feel like... I jumped, I jumped to that because yeah no no I love it because I think that's just such an an out you know an outward way and a creative way for you to be giving in a yeah. you know and giving back in another way so tell us about that, um, that sort of bone yeah oh, this is a good one so uh right after surgery you know I was like okay I have the see-through bag attached to me and I was watching I was drinking some tea at the hospital I was like ew okay <laughs> Cool. I'm watching it come out. Right. Yeah. And I go, ah, well, most people wouldn't like what, you know, cause they don't have a sense of humor or they're not adjusting to their bag. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm atypical, you know, I'm okay with this. I'm living life. But what about the people that aren't happy, the people that are depressed? So I'm home recovering and I'm bored. Oh, I'm so bored. And I'm going to make some covers just for myself. So I went out and got this cheap fabric sat here and I'm like sewing. There's patterns online. There are, there's like one style pattern. It's one size fit all. Well, I'm not a one size fit all, you know, appliance. So I was like, yeah, mine's on the smaller side. So I made my own little pattern. It took days, but I did it. And I was like, Hey, this is fun. And I went out to the local, um, uh, swimming hole and I'm you know hanging out with one of my girlfriends this guy comes up and my my cover fell off and so you could only see what was underneath which right. is through and it's just whatever I must have drank or ate which I don't remember at the time he looked down and he's like you're a freak and I go well you're a fuckhead and so <laughs> like, totally just like this is how it is and he took off and I was like oh no, where's my bag cover? Well, I was swimming, so it fell off. Yeah. And I go home and I go, I could deal with that. You know, I was able to deal with that and just tell him to screw off. But what about other people? What about men that want to go to the beach and take off their shirt? How, how are they going to feel comfortable? What about a woman that wants to still wear a two-piece bathing suit because she has a gorgeous body and wants to show it up, but she's got this bag. So I go, I'm going to learn how to make bag covers for every brand of, you know, every brand that's out there, which there's three major brands. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn. So I sat and was learning and it took my mind off of my treatment. It took my mind off of my cancer, my recovery. And I was like, I'm going to do this for other people. And it just, took off from there but that you know I just did it to cover up my own and then 
the wheels started to turn and like, hey, I was put in this situation. I know other people probably couldn't deal with it. I wonder if these bag covers would help them out. And let me tell you, <laughs> I've got a lot of feedback of like people saying, I can go to the doctors and show my bag off because my cover is so cool, Heather, and it's fun to, you know, show or to the grandparents that are like, we didn't know how to tell our grandkids that, you know, I have this bag, but I got an ABC cover and my granddaughter's learning her ABCs on my cover. So I'm like, yes, this is great. So. <clears throat> Incredible. How, how can, and I'm even thinking in the future, and so I'll be connecting yeah. with you after this in terms of how to get this out even more, but how can people get their hands, if there's someone listening right now, how could they get their hands on one of your covers? Well, um, right now I'm only doing, you know, off of Facebook and stuff. Uh, so Facebook and Instagram, but it is Petunia's Ostomy Designs. Uh, the, just type that in on Facebook or even on um, Instagram. It will pop right up right to my page. And um, you can message me right there. And I get back to you really on the, on the quick side. So no more than five hours. Um, even on the weekends, I'm just around. So I will always be able to message back. And then we just go from there. Awesome. So I'm going to include that Petunia's Ostomy Designs on yes. IG, Instagram, or Facebook. I'm going to include that in the show notes. Yeah. So yeah. that people can reach out to you um, if they are interested in learning more. Yeah. Um, what What do you see? What do you do? You see a, a future? What's your in terms of the, this business sort of? becoming more is this a hobby like because this could go it started as a hobby it really yeah. did. It started as a hobby and then it just I love being able to connect with the people and say how I'm changing their themselves yeah. or a family member because they're buying for a family member or maybe their daughter or son I, I get a lot of kids right now too which is great um but for so long I've just said, oh, it's my hobby since I only work part-time. I want to keep my mind busy. So yeah, I, I do it. But gosh, I think my hobby is turning into about six days a week. <laughs> I, I see this. I see something pretty, pretty awesome here. Like imagine yeah. this, you know, people, imagine people leaving the hospital mm -hmm. with a cover of their choice. Yep. Well, I kind of have to say, so with my, with, you know, my health insurance um they they of course my doctors see how positive i've been and they know about my covers um for most patients you get put with what's called an ostomy nurse it's a nurse that you go see every couple months um and what they do is they take your bit your appliance off and look at your stoma make sure your skin's healing and well taken care of and you can talk to your stoma nurse about any questions concerns maybe try in new appliances. Well, with mine, my stoma nurses, they're like, I love your bags. Can you start bringing them into our hospital? I'm like, yeah, sure. Well, I just signed with my hospital that they are buying, um, so they're buying 50 bags from me and they'll write my check and I, then I give them 50 bags. So on the day of surgery for all these ostomy patients, they can sit and they go, I don't think you want to wake up knowing that you have a bag. We would like to be able to cover it up. What bag would you like? And the hospital gives them out for free to all the new patients. And then they bluntly say to her, uh, to them like, hey, it's one of our own ostomate patients that makes them and wants to give back to you guys something that could be something positive. They give them my information, my business card, and they can call me or me message me if they want more or if they have questions regarding, you know, how do you deal with your bag? How do you deal with, you know, just everyday life? And so, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going that way for a little bit. Talk about a woman making a difference in this world. Like, <laughs> holy hell, like, <laughs> not a path you imagined at the age of 33, hey? No. 
No. And talk about um, resilience. And then the next thing I want to talk about is mindset. Like what a oh. rock solid kick-ass mindset you have. Why don't, can, can we talk about that a little bit in terms yeah. of, you know, I'm sure there was a, there was a, I imagine there was a choice at one point, you know, or maybe it wasn't a choice for you, but I imagine for people, it must be sort of at some sort of crossroads. It's like you could go one way yeah. or you could go another. Yes. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about that time and then how you chose? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was, I had three choices. The doctor gave me three choices. Option A, which was very like, let's go ahead and chemo, radiation, blah, blah, blah. Option B, uh, we'll just remove the section, hook you back up. You're going to have a normal bowel. You know, we're going to let you sit on the toilet to poop, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Or option C. And option C was go drastic. And I call it the drastic surgery. And I go, I looked at him. It took me two minutes. I looked at him. I go, I want a life. And he goes, then I think I know what way. And I go, yep, option C, let's go. Um, I, I didn't cry. I didn't hesitate. I didn't, I looked at it as value of where am I going to get my life? You know, can I have a life? Can I see my family and see my friends? Yeah. So recovery is going to be a bitch, yeah. but in the long run, I'm going to be looking great. I'm going to be feeling better. So what if I got this bag? So there was three options and man, I, my doctor just looked at me and goes, well, nice. Okay, let's, let's go. And there is ups and downs, the mental part of it. Oh, absolutely. There is. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sugarcoat this whole thing and say, oh, you're never going to have a bad day. Once you have a surgery, mm -mm, you will you will have bad days. You will have those days that you want to just not get out of bed. You want to cry. You want to say, fuck this. I shouldn't have ever even done any of it and just, you know, let myself go. But my days when that happens, it's maybe, I think since, since surgery. So since June 8th of 2017, I've only had three breakdowns. And they've only lasted a full day. Besides that, it's been, okay, what can I do? How, you know, let me reach out to another ostomy patient and see how they are recovering. Let me see how, what they do to get themselves in a better mind frame. So I think it's incredible how you get strength from supporting others. Yeah. And I think it's a beautiful reminder of how, just for humanity in general, how on those, in those days, in these moments, in these phases of life, or the seasons of life, because there are seasons of life, when we are feeling like we want to crawl under a rock, stay under our covers, those are the moments that we usually need to reach out even more. Yes. Yes. And, and I didn't in, do that at first. I didn't do it. And man, it was that first day was like, wow. And then I reached out, I reached out to somebody and I was like, Hey, this is great. I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. As I was getting better, she was getting better too, because we were able to just talk it through and yell and cuss and say, this is unfair. And why, why do we have to go through it? And then at the end of the conversation, which was an hour and 22 minutes, <laughs> we both stopped and go, man, we're, we're so much better. We got it all out in the open. We both understood what we were going through. Now we can move forward. I love it. I love it. Um, so through this as well, I imagine that have, there have been people that you have sort of looked up to or who have offered been of inspiration to yeah. you. Tell us a little bit about who that person those people have been? So one of them has been a little girl. Um, her name's Paisley. Uh, she's five years old. And I, I got a, in touch with her mom uh, five months after my surgery. And uh, her mom let me know that this little five-year-old girl uh, has an ostomy just like me. And she's battling kidney cancer and everything else. But man, she just had 
such high spirits and so happy. And her mom's like, I'm reaching out to you because I don't know how it is to have an ostomy. How does it feel to have this bag attached? How does the skin feel when it's red and active? And so we just started talking and I became a big part of that family, even though we're hundreds of miles away from one another. I started making her daughter ostomy covers, you know, for her bag. And she would send me pictures like, Heather, give up today. I love you. And then she would, you know, send a picture of her wearing her cover in just like a cute little shirt and shorts to bed with the I love you heart. And from that moment, I'm just like, girl, you're five years old, kicking ass. Yeah. And 34 going, well, crap, you know, I'm having a crappy day. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to wash my hair, whatever, you know. But this little girl kept saying, you can do it, Heather. I love you. We can beat this cancer together. That was it. We can beat this together. And today, this little girl is in remission. And I'm so happy for her. I'm like, so ecstatic but she still is just my little she's she's my hero I I look up to this little five-year-old that every day just kept telling me we can get through it it's okay it doesn't matter that we you know she didn't have any hair at the time she's like I'm bald it's okay <sighs> like look at my bag it's cute because Heather made me a new cover for it you know just little things so amazing amazing how you know how age sometimes transcends anything or or a situation can transcend and you know any age yep and, and and so from a soul soul speaking to each other it's got nothing it had nothing to do I know. With age at all well and everybody goes and you look up to this girl and i go yeah i go there's older people that i admire but they haven't been what drives me. Yeah. There, you know, nobody else has really given me that flame. Uh, you know, of course, my support, you know, all my friends and, you know, my family are great support and they help me. But like I said, I go, I'm not admired. I'm not looking up to you guys. And they go, no, we look up to you. <laughs> we want to be you. We want to be you. We want to know how you do this every day. And so I go, oh, okay, well, I don't know that part, that answer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, having, you know, experienced this, um, what do you, what have you found or what do you think that the world needs more of? If you're seeing the world from a, you know, a pretty unique perspective. I just, in the world aspect, I just think the world needs more understanding. We, we need to understand. We need to stop judging. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest thing, judging, judgments. It just needs to stop. It's so hurtful. It hurts. It, can, it hurts a five-year-old. It can hurt a 30, well now, almost 37-year-old. And I know for a fact, I've seen an 82 year old in the hospital and it's hurt them too, you know? So my biggest thing is, yeah, we just, the, the judgment has to stop. Judgment has to stop. Absolutely. Um, what advice would you have for someone right now who's listening either with a disease or a challenge and that you have just really moved them in terms of I need to get out of this, this, this mindset or the space that I'm in. I, I, I need some support. What would you recommend as a baby step for them first to do? Cause that could be a big, yeah. Um, there is for anything, like anything out there that you're going through, it can be an ostomy. It could be a new cancer, you know, a new diagnosis of a cancer, a genetic disease, anything. Um, there is some wonderful Facebook groups. Look into one and reach out to one person. You could just, I did, reach out to one person. You can kind of go through and read some of, you know, like the daily posts that they post. Yeah. Reach out to somebody who has an inspirational post. And, and I'm only using this because I did it too. That I read somebody's inspirational post. I clicked on their Facebook page. Yes, I stalked them. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> yep, we all do it. I got on her Facebook page. I stalked her and I saw how positive this 
her personal life was and that she didn't hide. She didn't hide it from her personal page to her, you know, to the uh, support page. And that's where I started. And it, that was my first like reach out. I didn't reach out to a doctor or a therapist or, or a family member because honestly, I love family. I think family is wonderful, but sometimes the family will tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. and you don't always want that or they don't know your struggle because they're not in your shoes. Yeah. So going to a support, you know, chat site on Facebook, sometimes if you find that positive one, don't go for the negatives. Stay away from the negative <laughs> because that's only going to get you more negative. Yeah. If you find that positive, look into that positive person and reach out and say, can I ask you, how do you stay positive? I'm having severe down days. I would like to know what you do to help yourself and go from there. And I think that's the perfect spot to reach out to. And I think that's a beautiful and perfect example and suggestion to give. So thank you for, for sharing that. And I think that is an easy first step. It can be difficult, but as a first step, you don't even have to leave your home. You can still Correct. stay in the comfort of your, yeah, your, of, of your own home. So how, um, I, well, I kind of know kind of the answer to this question, but how is your, how is your health now? And what is, what is the next <sighs> step for you? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> the outside of me looks great. I feel great on the outside. Uh, mentally, I feel great. The inside is just taking a toll again. Um, I'm going back in um, for another surgery tomorrow. And we will be going in, um, removing all of my female parts. Um, so with the female parts, I will ha be having ovaries removed. My fallopian tubes are already gone. So my ovaries, my uterus, my cervix, two masses, uh, six, seven pounds of fluid um, from like cancerous stuff. Okay. And then we are removing more of my small intestine because they found some more polyps and a tumor in my small intestine. So they'll be removing more of that. Uh, my abdomen is about 90% scar tissue. So they need to get in there and remove. Their goal is to remove approximately 70% of the scar tissue. And um, they are actually removing my, my butthole, my sphincter muscle. Mm -hmm. It has a ton of different names, but let's be legit. Let's just call it the butthole. <laughs> Moving that because there's no use for it anymore okay. and still develop colon cancer. Okay. Even though it's attached, it can still develop. So we're just going to remove it while we're in there. Um, and we'll, they're going to look at my spleen. I have some spleen issues. I have some liver issues. And they're going to have a bladder cam, a bladder doctor in there, too, to look at my bladder to see how well it's really functioning at this time, too. So, yeah, going to go in for some massive surgery. <laughs> uh, and you are Wonder Woman. I said it already. And with a mindset that's, I don't know, as strong as Iron Man or something. <laughs> and so, no doubt, uh, we will be seeing you on Facebook shortly after um you you come to uh, yes. and navigate the the computer or your phone I would oh love, yeah <laughs> i would love to ask for my for my own sake as well yeah. as listeners how can people show their support to you what would be a way that we can do that oh um i didn't prepare you for that <laughs> uh, yeah you know uh, yeah i really wasn't ready for that one <laughs> You know, just reach out, um, reach out to me, say hi, you know, um, right now, of course, social media is going to be a big thing for me during my healing and stuff. So the positive, you know, thinking of you, I, I just listen to you, you know, like, I want to, I want to hear more about you. I want to follow you, you know, that's kind of, that's what inspirates me. That's yeah. what going like my gosh I don't know you but thank you and I've had a lot of people I don't have what you have but I I do know that feeling of not wanting to get up 
you know, yeah. on a day. And them reaching out and I'm like, hey, how can I be a better influence? How can I be there for you? And then they go, can I just follow you on Facebook? Can I just secretly follow you on Facebook? I'm like, hell yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I have to say when I heard back from you that you were going to be on my show, I yeah. thought I'd won the lottery. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. Like the, that is the impact that you had on me and you didn't even know who I was. Yeah. I knew of you through the news. Mm -hmm. And so I know. I know that people beyond your wildest expectations and dreams are being moved by you right now. And you have been anyone who has known you, who does know you, who has heard of you. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I would love, I would love people to take you up on that yeah. offer of going to your, so they should go, should they go to Heather Matson? Do they go? Yeah, go to my, uh, my, yeah, go to Heather. So I'm under Facebook as my full name, Heather Marie Matson. Okay. And I will include that in, may I include that in the show yeah, notes as well? Absolutely. And absolutely. I would love to see how many messages we can get, help get yeah. on your page to help, yeah. lift, to help lift and let you know that you are making a difference in, in so many people's lives. I have a I have a dream of an, and goal and mission for helping people wake up in their lives, mm -hmm. pursue their dreams and goals. And it's on on my show, it's only done through my guests. And what a guest you have been! Oh, you were just you. A, a, a joy, and your story is one of positivity and persistence in the face of a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for being uh, my favorite hour of the week this week mm -hmm. uh, and more than my favorite hour of the week. You've, you've <laughs> a really special person who has touched me in ways I'm, 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 I'm unable to fully describe. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I want to thank you as well, all of my loyal listeners and followers and remind you that information about my radio show and my guests and how you can reach out to Heather can be found at louisehreed.com. Also a big shout out to my producer, Cameron Steele at Contact Talk Radio Network. And finally, I'm here to highlight and showcase people who are taking brave, bold action, whose actions have a positive impact on our world and in our world, just like Heather today. With that said, I'd like to encourage you all to be brave, be bold, and be happy. And in the words of Heather, to be your own advocate. Until next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm Louise H. Reed, wishing you all an amazing day. Thanks, friends. Bye-bye.